Now then, people, welcome back to the Just Your Football Show. It is Monday, August the 9th, and it is game week. It is game week. I, for one, cannot wait. We're about five days out now for the start of the Premier League season for the Mighty Whites. And, of course, we're up against the old enemy, Manchester United. I can not wait. We'll have a bit of Manchester United chat during today's episode of the Daily Leagues and of course loads of transfer chatter to get into as well. Um, remember guys as well, please subscribe to the channel and get your notification bell smashed. There will be a lot of content coming out this week with it being game week. We're going to have opposition previews, we're going to have my preview, all that sort of jazz. So keep it locked at the Just Joe Football Show as per. And let's get into today's video. And this is the moment when I take a stand of God. So, guys, we're going to start, first of all, with the Oracle. We're going to start with the main man, Phil, here, yeah? Uh, he got into a bit of a Twitter exchange yesterday that I was quite um, eager to watch and have a look at. A few questions were posed to Phil, re transfers and stuff. I've actually reached out to Phil. Hopefully, fingers crossed, um, he'll give me some time and... Come on, my show. Um, <laughs> it's highly likely he's he's uh, it's highly unlikely he's watching this. But if you are Phil, just please come on, mate. Yeah, answer. You know how it is. But let's let's go straight to the Twitter exchange that happened. So uh, it was asked by uh, a lad by the name of Louis, actually a good friend of mine as well on Twitter on the Twitter sphere. I've never met him in person, but you know what I mean. Online, I would class him as a friend. Uh, he said, "Is there any chance we make an approach for Kuna now he's finished with the Olympics?" There were reports saying in Germany that Legion United, are one of the teams that Mateus Kuna is destined for, they do believe he's going to leave her for Berlin. I'm not so sure, and I've said for quite a while now that I believe he stays there, and then he will be due for like a bidding war next summer. I don't think he's got long on his his deal. I don't think Leeds United have the funds to be able to entertain that deal. We know that Zenit St. Peter's burger after him. I think Liverpool have even inquired about these services as well. Leeds are linked, but I just don't see it happening. I think it's out of our reach. I know that will disappoint a lot of people because everyone's big on him and he will be that marquee signing. He's a player, isn't he? Like where you go, yeah, I'm having that. I'm having that. But Phil Hay said they've been saying no to the Kuna rumours all summer, much like they did with Nathie Hernandez. And we know how that turned out as well. And he was then asked the question, has there ever been a case, Phil, where the board have said no to you to put you off the scent? Or is it fairly straight and they mean what they say to you? And he said, look, they're, they're always straight with me, you know. Or he said usually, but, you know, I don't, I don't see them lying. I don't see um, them into that sort of stuff with the, with the local journals. And, you know, Phil and, and Graham said we weren't after Nandes, even though reports from all across the continent told us to the contrary. And we weren't, and we never were, you know, and he's not coming to Leeds United. Um, he was then asked, is Noah Lang still on the radar, Phil? Uh, and his response was, they like Lang. And that's a genuine link. But they haven't actually made a concrete move for him yet. So they may have made a move in terms of speaking to him, speaking to his agent, sounding things out with Club Bruges, although nothing concrete has been made yet in terms of a bid like we have with you know, Conor Gallagher, for example, or like we have with Lewis O'Brien or Christopher Klass and then players that have come in the door. But it's clear that we are very much interested in Noah Lang. I think if we do go for the winger, maybe he is that man. We know he wants to move on. He's told, uh, you know, colleagues at the football club that, um, you know, I think Dan James is destined for Leicester. We keep being linked with Ryan Kent and will continue to be linked until he moves on, a bit like the Dan James saga. Maybe if Rangers don't get into Champions League, there's an opportunity there for Ryan Kent. Uh, but Noah Lang seems to be the number one pick, you know, uh, and Phil's confirming that they like him. He's genuine, uh, but we're yet to make a concrete move. Um, he was then asked, will we actually make a move for a winger? He said, it's hard to say. It's been floated all summer but was always a case of doing it if the right option came up at the right price, much like Rafinha last summer. And we did that late in the window as well. You know, so if we do get that call from Club Bruges, if they do manage to acquire a winger, if the Calado deal goes through, because we know that hit a few stumbling blocks. I mean, we know recently he rejected a move because they wanted a permanent deal. I think Barcelona did the same as well. So we'll have to wait and see with that. And maybe if they do acquire a new winger, we then get a call late in the window to say, we need some cash. We want to move Noah Lang on. We'll have to, we'll have to wait and see. Um, he was then... Someone asked him the question, is it likely out of a loan uh, as well, or are we being greedy, you know? Um, and Phil said, look, centre midfield is the main thing they've been after since Verpo. Gallagher was top choice, um, but it, we've now moved on to Lewis O'Brien. But he did say no financials have yet been agreed 
with Lewis O'Brien or, of course, Huddersfield. Um, we're going to speak now in some more detail on Lewis O'Brien. Um, you know, Leeds apparently have offered to pay £10 million to Huddersfield, but in instalments. This is coming from Alan Nixon, who actually was one of the first to break the story. Um, and apparently that's of little use to Huddersfield. Um, they need the money almost straight away so that they can then replace Lewis O'Brien. Um, so if Leeds United are to, uh, you know, complete the signature, we need to get close to this £10 million that they have asked for. Now, if that was the original asking price, we were told they'd bid around 2 to £3 million. Um, maybe they've said, look, yeah, we'll meet your £10 million valuation, but it'll have to be in instalments. Huddersfield are like, no, we need the cash now. Um, so... We'll have to wait and see. And Nixon went on to say as well, various deals have actually been knocked back, uh, including some straight cash and some with swaps. So could it have been the case that Leeds are saying, right, we'll, you know, we'll give you the 10 million and we'll give you the two to three million up, up front that was reported. I'm not privy to these no negotiations. We were told Robbie Gotts was potentially offered in a cash plus player swap deal. So, you know, there's, it seems like Leeds are really trying for this, but it also makes me worry. Think, well, are we that cash strapped? <laughs> I don't think we are cash strapped, do you know what I mean? But um, yeah, it seems like we're trying any, everything but actually just paying up the 10 million that Huddersfield want. And if we really want him, maybe we're going to have to do it. Um, look, apparently Lewis O'Brien wants the move. He's willing to join up with Leeds United and work his way into that starting 11. Um, he's a tenacious player. Uh, and it shows that with every performance. And you know, he's willing to come in knowing that he's not going to be first choice. He wants to break in uh, and, and and show his worth to Bielsa and get in the side that way. We know that, obviously, Conor Gallagher decided to reject that. He wanted guaranteed first-team football, hence his move to Crystal Palace. Um, but O'Brien, you know, wants to come in, fight for his place. Um, and like I said yesterday, why will not you? I mean, Leeds United are a huge club. Huddersfield, not so much. So it is what it is. Um, so hopefully we can get that deal done. It's clear Leeds want to get it done. They're trying a number of different deals. Um, you know, I, I'm surprised they didn't take the cash plus Robbie Gotts. I think Robbie Gotts is a is a great player. Carlos Colbran knows that as well. But I, I guess it's it's down to the powers that be and Huddersfield probably want hard hard cash. Their owners want hard cash. So we'll have to wait and see, but it looks like that one's going to rumble on. We're now going to move on to the winger chase. We know that, that Noah Lang seems to be n the number one spot. However, in the last 24 hours, we have been linked to a uh, Fulham sensation, uh, Fabio Carvalho. Um, he's been brought through Portuguese originally, uh, came to England, um, been brought through the, the Fulham uh, academy, uh, got blooded in the first time, first team under Scott Parker. Uh, he played six times last season uh, and also, of course, made his Premier League debut. Um, Fulham want to keep on hold of him, of course, to try and get back straight into straight into the Premier League under new coach Marco Silva. Uh, but apparently Leeds United, West Ham and Porto are all circling because Fabio Carvalho has turned down the offer of a new contract at Craven Cottage. Um, I don't know much about him. I, I didn't see him at Fulham. If, if, the, if it gets closer, I'll maybe speak to a, a few uh, Fulham fans to get the low down on him. But he's out of contract next summer. He's clearly a talented boy, 18-year-old. Um, they want to convince him to stay and, and fight and work under new coach Marco Silva and, and, and try and get you know, back into the Premier League. But... Of course, when, when clubs in the Premier League, like Leeds United and West Ham or in Europe, by the way, come knocking, then of course it's going to capture the player's eyes. So it's one to keep your eyes on, Fabio Carvalho from Fulham. As I was talking to you earlier, of course, as well about Robbie Gotts getting offered in a potential swap deal for Lewis O'Brien, it does look like his time at Leeds United has come to an end. Um, apparently, I, I said this a couple of weeks ago as well, that Motherwell want to sign him uh, along with Salford City. Obviously, he spent a good half season at Salford City uh, previously on loan with them. He's not featured in pre-season for Leeds United, so it looks like Robbie Gotts is going to be playing his football elsewhere next season. And look, I, I, I really like Robbie and, and I hope he, he goes on to have a fantastic career and, and gets the move that he wants. And um, we're now going to uh, move it on slightly from transfer news just to any other business, really. Um, 
the YEP spoke specifically yesterday to Stuart Dallas just on pre-season in the state of the squad. Of course, we play Manchester United now in just five, t- uh, five days' time. Um, Dallas, obviously, last season's player of the year. He thinks the squad's readiness for the Premier League is more advanced than it was 12 months ago. Um, when we come back for pre-season, we were dead on it straight away. Uh, he said, if anything, the lads keep coming back fitter and fitter. He said, it's starting to annoy me. It's becoming into a bit of a competition to see who actually is the fittest. Um, he says, <laughs> I'm someone who likes to enjoy myself when I'm away, so it's tough when I have to come back and, and get to peak fitness. Um, but he did say, I think we are even in a better position than we were this time last year. Um, obviously, the results haven't gone as good as we'd have liked, but we feel more equipped. And that's quite interesting hearing that from Stuart Dallas because it's been so much doom and gloom over pre-season. I think the transfer scenarios feed into that as well. The fact that there's been a lack of business and only one come in the door for the first team. Got to remember the, uh, the uh, opposition uh, skill level went up a notch as well, playing Euro- Europa League sides. Um, results haven't gone great, although I thought we were great against uh, or better against Villarreal. But Dallas believes that they're in even better condition than they were 12 months ago. Uh, so hopefully they're they're ready to go for Saturday. Um, one player uh, that we know is definitely not going to make it, I think now is Diego Lorente. However, Phil here was tweeting out that Junior Firpo is a minor injury, which is music to my ears because I can't be dealing with people getting moved around the pitch. I want Junior Firpo to get a nice 38 games under his belt at left back. Um, I don't need him to be missing the se- season for me. I've, I've got a lot riding on this guy. I think he's going to be uh, an absolute baller in this Leeds United side. Um, just on Manchester United as well, Dan James uh, has been speaking. Uh, he was speaking to MUTV or ManUnited.com, whatever it is. He said he cannot wait for the game. I think everyone is exactly the same. What a game to have first, of course, Leeds United. Uh, I think as well... Uh, last season, for the fans, they were gutted not being able to attend this fixture. Um, it will be a great atmosphere, and I'm sure it's one both teams are really looking forward to, which goes without saying. I mean, I don't know why they're asking Dan James, because he's not going to play. <laughs> Sorry, that's a little bit of shade. That is a little bit of shade, but he's got to get in the first team, and he first of all, before he starts speaking about this fixture. Uh, and just to finish, guys, as well. We're going to speak about Alfonso Pedraza. This is something some of you might have missed. Of course, he spent time on loan at Leeds United. I think it was under Gary Monk, if I'm right. Yeah, off the top of my head. He put out a nice Instagram post after the game against Villarreal saying the pre-season is over. The Super Cup is waiting for us. It has been a pleasure to see you again, Leeds United. Good luck for this season. So thank you to Alfonso Pedraza for that. It's always nice to see ex-players, even if they only spent a couple of months here, just, you know, speaking uh, well of the club and to the fans. So that was great as well. Um, But that is it for your daily leads on Monday, August the 9th. Thank you so much for watching. As always, remember, subscribe to the channel and get that notification bell smash. There'll be much more content coming your way over the next five days between now and Manchester United. Uh, Smash the like on the way out and have a great week, guys. I'll see you in a bit now. Peace out. Leeds, Leeds, Leeds.